All right, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and much blessings and salutation to you, elect Akiyam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. All right, I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, here on the road, just doing a quick in transit as I'm on my way to the Shaddai to work. And I'm um, just on my spirit to just um, go into uh, a few things, namely going into how um, we need to continually pray for the elect, man. All right. Continually pray without cease. All right. The scriptures tells us to pray without cease. And there is a plethora of different prayers that we have within these scriptures here to go into, man. But as we're here within these last days, we see um, Esau is cracking down. All right. We see war. And rooms of war getting stirred up over there in the Middle East where those angels are um, manipulating the minds of men over there. We just see tons of things. And lastly, we see brothers being afflicted on all sides, man. All right, on all sides. Now, I will say within my short period of time being within this truth, all right, I haven't seen brothers this afflicted as now. All right, brothers are going through mental infirmities. Brothers are going through physical infirmities. Brothers are being afflicted, man. All right. So with us being in the know and understanding our positions within this thing, knowing that we're gonna be we're gonna be tempted, knowing that we're gonna be afflicted as Job was, we need to continually pray for one another, man. Because as we go through these things here, this could cause ones that might be a little bit weaker to fall out, and it could cause you to have those thoughts in your mind that like it, that the Lord's not dealing with you. Okay. When when He exactly is dealing with you. That's why he's putting you through these things. All right. Matter of fact, um, the scripture just came to mind right now. One sec, brothers. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to start at verse... Verse 7. So 2 Corinthians 12 and 7 says... And at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now, this is the beloved apostle Paul speaking, man. All right. Now, he's saying at least he should be, should be exalted above measure because when you look at Paul, Paul was um, the apostle to the Gentiles and Paul was given a very heavy portion when it came to his, um, his ministry. All right. He was given a very heavy portion to be able to preach unto those Gentiles. But he said, at least he should be exalted above measure. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, that gave him a thorn in the flesh. Okay, so Paul, so Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth. And as he's speaking to the church in Corinth, he's speaking to us as well, man. He's speaking to all of us. Hey, as it's written, all things that are written aforetime are written for our understanding. or written for our learning. Salakia. But just as Paul was given that affliction or he was given that, um, that thorn in the flesh, the same thing applies to us, man. None of us are exempt from being attacked, all right, from being hit by Satan. Even Job was, man, and Job was an example of all of us, man, on how we was to be afflicted by Satan, man. Best believe Satan is going up to the Lord, asking the Lord for permission to afflict us in different manners, all right? He did it to Peter. He did it to Paul. He did it to you. He did it to you. He did it to me. He's doing it to every single last one of us, man. So Paul is speaking on a scenario knowing that we were going to have to go through these things. All right. I'm going to continue. And it says, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above measure. So at the end of the day, this keeps us to be humble. All right. This keeps us to be humble, man. But as brothers are being, as brothers are being afflicted by the messenger of Satan, we need to make sure that we're praying for one another that we're able to endure, man. All right. Pray to the Heavenly Father to for him to just give you your portion for the day for you to deal with, man. All right. Verse 8 says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Okay, and when you go into that word beseech or besought, it means beg. All right. So Paul was given heavy supplication unto the Lord, man. It said he begged the Lord thrice. Meaning he was constantly in the motion of prayer. Like Daniel prayed three times a day. And look how Daniel was afflicted, man. He was thrown in a lion's den with hungry lions. All right. Daniel was afflicted 
on all type of manners. If you if, if you consider yourself to be a man of the Lord, these are things that we're going to have to go through. All right? Talking to the whole body, to the whole assembly. Okay? And it sucks. And it, yeah, and we know about it. But once you actually go through the experience, it has it like, damn. But the reason why we go through these things is for Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah to build us up, man. Hey, the scriptures say the meek shall inherit the earth. They don't say that for no reason. It says that because on this side, we were going to be in a meek position. But he's teaching us how to deal with it, how to tolerate it. All right? That's why in verse 9 it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So this is the only way that we can be perfected. Going through these afflictions, going through this tribulation. All right? Hey, we wanted to know good and evil in the garden. Guess what? We got it. Yeah, it bit off a little more than we could chew, but at the end of the day, we still got to go through it, man. Because this is the only way. This is the straight gate, man. So as we have this understanding that we're going to have to go through these things, man, knowing that every single last one of us are going to catch different hells and afflictions according to our measure, man, we need to make sure as a unit, as a body, that we're praying for one another, that we can endure through these hardships and these thorns that we catch here in the flesh. Okay? Ain't none of us exempt from going through things, man. Ain't nobody too good to pray for a brother, man. Even if a brother's constantly asked for prayer. If he's constantly asking for prayer, that means he needs it. But for the brothers that might be constantly asking for prayer, just make sure first and foremost that you're praying for yourself too. And just not asking brothers to pray for you all the time when you're not praying for yourself. You don't want to get put in that motion when you're always in the in the motion of asking. Not, not, not putting the motion, I'm sorry. You don't want to get into the habit of always asking brothers to pray for you when you're not praying for yourself. All right? First and foremost, you need to pray for yourself. And then that's when you ask brothers to pray for you afterwards, man. All right? But at the same time, no one understand that the Lord is still going to put you through these things so you can be able to understand weakness so you can be made strong man the scriptures don't say the strong shall inherit the earth it says the meek shall inherit the earth he says his grace is sufficient for us man meaning the period of time that we're down here to get right with the Lord that's sufficient for us because we go off every day so since we go off every day in order to be purged and in order for our sins to be cleansed we have to be placed on this altar to be that burnt sacrifice unto the Lord. And that's what we deal with daily. Daily, man. But this is refining us, man. All right? And as much as we talk about us refining us, man, we, we, we really have to sit back and think of it as, yeah, I'm just being refined. Not complaining as much, but to understand completely that this is the process, this is the path that you're going to have to go through while you should join here, man. That's why it's written... Have your sojourning here in fear. All right? Hey, man, the Lord can take you out at any moment, man. So why not do the things that he told you to do? Pray for a brother. Do the work. Do the things that he asked you to do. Be obedient unto him. All right? Know that you got to catch hell and take it like a man. The Lord ain't called little boys into this, man. Yeah, he called us as babes, but he said make yourselves as men. Let me find that real quick. One sec. in Isaiah hmm. I can't find it right now man but it goes into how we're supposed to be men within this truth alright so if we're men within this truth man we need to conduct ourselves as such act with maturity as men do pray for, the, pray for one another as a man of the Lord would do toward his brethren and take this hell cheerfully and understand that our grace is sufficient man this grace is sufficient enough for us all right, the only way to be purified as that goal is to literally take, the, take this hell, man. Catch this hell like Odell. Hold on one second, going through the gate of my child. Take it easy.
All right. That's the only way. The straight gate, man. But going back to the initial point, as we are within this straight gate, man, we still need prayers from brothers to help us as we as we travel. As we're here, man. Prayer is essential. Prayer is needed, man. The scripture says praying always. Let me get that. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 3. We give thanks to the Most High and the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, praying always for you. Okay? So we need to always be praying for one another, man. And that's a form of us giving thanks to the Heavenly Father, man, praying for your brethren, man. You read John the 17th chapter, did not Yahweh Shah pray for his elect? So if Yahweh Shah prayed for his brothers, what makes you think? That you shouldn't be praying for him as much, man. All right? We all want to be joint heirs to Yahweh Shai. We all want to rule together with Yahweh Shai, man. But before that process takes place, as we're here down here, catching this hell, being afflicted, we need to make sure that we're constantly praying for one another, man. All right? And that's just what it is, man. All right? I mean, I ain't want to make this too long. It's just a short lesson. But the spirit that told me to go into this lesson... And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to the brothers. Make sure you are always in the form of praying for one another, man. Constantly, as Yahweh Shai had done. And Yahweh Shai is the lead example of how we ought to conduct ourselves being down here. Especially since we're vice regents to Yahweh Shai. When you look in the mirror, you're supposed to see an image of Yahweh Shai. So within that being the case, conduct ourselves as such. All right? I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai. By our Kakwadash, double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and much salutation to the beloved brethren, kicking this word of sincerity and in truth. Shalom.